So I'm here with my mom today. Hi. Hi. I'm Michelle. Lizzie's Hi, mom. Michelle. Oh my God, so cute. Yes. Yeah, so I'm here with my mom. She watched Joy Luck Club when it premiered, but I grew up watching Andy Mack. Oh man. So it's very. We're very excited to meet you. Oh, nice um, to meet you too. So you. those two projects, you um, get to portray very different Asian American families. I'll say. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so um, why is it important to you for um, that variety to be shown on screen? Oh, because I really feel like everyone is everything, you know, and it's just a matter of embracing those parts of ourselves so that, you know, for me to be able to portray someone really tough, uh, like like Cece in, in Andy Mack, and then someone very sensitive in, in Joy Luck Club are parts of my own personality, and it's, it's just a wonderful way to express yourself as an actress when you can't always do that in real life as a person. So it's kind of like a free, uh, you, a free pass you get when when you um, can do it on on screen or stage. Um, I was wondering, what, how did you feel when you first read the script or read the book, if you had, above Joy Luck Club? I loved the book so much, and and my best friend at the time said, "Oh, Lauren, there's this book, Joy Luck Club. You should be in it." <laughs> As, as if it's that easy, yeah. like because they auditioned thousands of people across the country, and I said to my friend, "Yeah, I'll, I'll give it a try," but never, never in a million years thinking that you know I would get I would get a part in it. So it was very thrilling for me. And a lot of times in film, it's so visual that um, like the talent. If people are talented, that's kind of a given, right? And then it's a matter of like luck of the draw like I the director happened to think that I looked like I could be Franz Nguyen's daughter and vice versa so that worked out but it, sometimes it works in your favor and sometimes it doesn't work in your favor you know like you could be perfect for a role but if you don't look like visually how you're supposed to then it just doesn't work out so you know so lucky that it's you um, so is there a line or a scene that still stands out in your memory? Because I know my mom and my aunt quote Joy Luck Club all the time. You do? My Tell me some of your quotes that you quote. Well, my mom, she's always um, doing the um, waiting like a tiger in the trees. Yeah, that's a really <laughs> good one. And that was that was part of my storyline. Yeah. yeah, no, that was, that was a really important scene for me. You know, um, and also just the funnier scene of like, I don't think you should get credit for your ice cream anymore. Yeah. Like that, that's such a, you know, typical human thing mm -hmm. because you're never really fighting about what you're actually fighting about. So, you know, that was good writing. But um, yeah, I don't know. I, I like your quote the most. Yeah. Um, and lastly, do you have any advice for um, young, um, other aspiring Asian performers? I do. Um, I would say, because my own son wants to be an actor, so I, I tell him the same thing. You know, you, you just you can't control anything in this business because there's so many variables and art is so subjective. So the only thing you really can control is your craft. So I'm still taking acting lessons. Like, I think it's good to just keep... You know, it's like going to the gym when you're working out. You're working out your body, but if you don't work out your chops, you, you're gonna get rusty. And and I think that like so, I would just say study, 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 and try to find your voice um, because that I feel like your generation is so much better than my generation at having a voice, at speaking up, and saying I don't like this. This isn't right. You know, like this whole generation is so. So, so many activists, and I'm, I really take my hat off to how much people care and are willing to, to do so. My name's Lucy. Lucy, good to I'm from the Nerds of Color. This is my mom. You're Nerds of Color? Yeah. Oh, wow, okay. Thank you. This is my mom, and we watched Joy Luck Club together, so being here how is very special. How old were you when you watched Joy Luck Club together? 19. So how many years ago was that? I'm still 19. Okay. I just watched it. So it's the first time. So when did you watch it? Um, actually, this month, to prepare okay. for this okay, so event. It's, really, really it's been on my list for such a long time. Did you read the book? I didn't, but I've heard about this movie for so long. You should read the book. Okay, I will. I'm not... 
you, I'm telling you, you have to read the book. Okay. I love reading, so I will. Okay, go. You yeah. have it. It's on the shelf. Go, go, okay. go, go, go. Okay, go. Cool. okay, so we're here to celebrate the four women of, or all of the women of mm -hmm. um, Joy Luck yeah. Club. And I was wondering, do you have a favorite memory of all of you guys together? No, there's not one favorite memory because my memories are private. My memories are special. So it's not for public consumption. But I can tell you what my true treasure is is the relationships and the friendships that continually deepen, continually enrich themselves, and continually evolve over the 30 plus years that we've known each other, because we've known each other even before the filming of Joy Luck Club. Yeah, that's incredible. Um, so you've had such an iconic career, so many roles known worldwide, I would say so. But um, re last year we had the pleasure of seeing you in Spring Awakening at East West Players. Oh wow, fantastic, yeah. yay! So I was wondering, why is it important to you to go back to these smaller stages in your community? Because, especially coming out of pandemic, and my husband Daniel Blinkoff is there, and he and I played the adults in Spring Awakening, there is a particular selfishness as an actor to be able to perform for a live audience. I will say that outright first, because you do not repeat your same performance with, a, with an audience night after night after night. Your day is always different, your evening goes different, the audience reacts differently. To return to the stage is a joy and it's a selfish joy because you actually get to feel what they're feeling, how you're affecting the audience. With film, it's a little bit longer. It's a little bit longer stretch, three, four months uh, in filming a project. With a TV project, it usually takes about a week or two, and then you get to see it pretty much three months after. A film, you have to wait a year, two years, in order for it to come out. So again, it's the kinds of different reactions, but as an actor, the work is the same, because you're, you have the gift of playing a character in a story, and it's your responsibility to tell that story. But when you're on stage, you get to do it in front of a live audience and there's nothing like that. It was a wonderful show. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. Um, do you have any words of advice for aspiring yeah. Asian American performers? So you are the edge of your other Performers, you must yeah. either you accept the fact yeah. that or, you need or, to or be foolish yeah. and or stupid to be able to not care about criticisms, about critique, because you have a path, you have a journey, you have a direction and as to which you want to go in being able to perform as a dancer, as a singer, as an actor, or you have to have a great support system that you can depend on 24-7, 365 days a year to say, I need your help, I need your support, I need your feedback, I need you to tell me when I'm being a shit, and when I'm doing really great work and what can I do to help serve my community, help serve the work that I do, help serve my fellow actors. It's, it's about a constant give and take. So having a rootedness and, and a care and a sensibility about giving back is really, really important, especially when we, when we keep calling out for better representation because representation does matter. Do you think representation has gotten better since Joy Luck Club came out? Absolutely. It can only get better. It can't go backwards. Um, I think it's a test of our patience because I believe everybody says that change should happen, but change happens at its own pace. So you must be, we must be patient with the speed at which change will happen. Thank you so much for your time. It was a pleasure to meet you. You're welcome. I was wondering, is there a line or a scene that's from Joy Luck Club that still stands out in your memory? Oh, always in my heart, the line, I see you. My mom says that to me all the time. My favorite line. And wherever I go, people still, you know, uh, uh, say it that line to me. I see you. You know, and uh, uh, also in many articles written, they, they also repeat that line. So that's my favorite line. Yeah, very special. Um, do you have a favorite memory with um, the cast or the crew filming this movie? Yes, of course. Uh, it's amazing. This is one of the most memorable 
uh, experience to me because of the Joy Luck Club. After 30 years, we still see each other, we still hug each other, we, we, we call ourselves the Joy Luck Club family. Uh, yeah. yeah, and I was the mom, not only for Mina Wen in the Joy Luck Club, but I play mother of Tamlin in other projects, and Rosalind Chow, and and, 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 and Tomlin, we all are mother and daughter in many other projects. Yeah. Very special. Um, so you've been working for so long, you've so many projects, and you've written a memoir, you've done so many films. I was wondering, um, what keeps you inspired to keep working? I love my crap. I love working, and I am very lucky, still able to work. And I I've been continuously with five different projects since last year. Yeah, uh, one of my uh, series for HBO will be a premiere on April 14. The Sympathizer. Yeah, will be April. Sympathizer came from the same uh, title novel by the Pulitzer Prize winner author Viet Thanh Nguyen. And it's amazing uh, with a very talented uh, cast. Among, among them, the, 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 the famous, uh, the famous uh, winner award, uh, Sandra Oh and uh, Robert Downey Jr. Yeah, and then I have just uh, read another TV series for Apple TV, mm -hmm. The Sinking Spring, uh, by um, uh, producer, director uh, Ridley Scott and, 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 and Peter Craig. And I also uh, finished another feature film in Australia called My Eye. And then, just last week, I returned, uh, I returned home from uh, finishing a, uh, a feature, uh, but uh, I cannot say much about that yet and until until they leave the embargo, you know. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. For 68 years now. Yeah. 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 Thank you so much for your time. It was so nice to meet you. Thank you. Yeah. For AARP, what are your priorities for diversity, equity, and inclusion? Well, thank you so much for coming. I'm Daphne Kwok, and I'm in the Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, and I head up the Asian American Pacific Islander audience work. And what we are here for and what AARP is here for is really uh, to really ensure that people 50 and older, and especially for our AAPI community, our families, right? We want to make sure that people are really living the best lives. And so how can we do that? So from AARP standpoint is to make sure that, you know, what we are providing to uh, people 50 and older in their families, um, and especially in the area of like caregiving. A lot of the work that we are doing on the Asian American side is to really make sure that people know, you know, it's important to plan, to be ready to talk about caregiving uh, for your loved ones and so therefore what we try to do is produce materials that are in language we identify spokespeople like Richard Louie of MSNBC like General Tony Taguba as well that can talk about their caregiving journey so that we can hopefully be able to help our AAPI families uh, as everyone is aging every single day uh, how important it is for us to be able to serve the Asian American Native Hawaiian Pacific Islander community. That's so great. So um, today we're here to celebrate the women of Joy Luck Club. Do you have a favorite memory related to that movie? Well, I do remember it was 30 years ago, and so at that point it was just so iconic, right, to have Asian Americans on the screen. Uh, and so to be able to see a whole cast, and especially as an Asian American woman, and I'm Chinese American as well too, to have Chinese American stories being told uh, really resonated. And I just rewatched it again for probably the 10th time two nights ago with my 90 year old mother. And I think as I'm older myself, to watch the film again, in a different light, I'm like, oh, I should have been a better daughter, right? You know, I could relate to so much of what the daughters were doing, but then also, you know, from the mother's side, but even the back in the China days too, because 
m m our family came from China, came out of Shanghai as well to the war. I mean, all of that was so relevant to our family. My dad, who's 98, was watching the movie and the the scene, especially with um, the ox cart, right, that pushing the two twin babies. My dad mentioned again that his mother was born during the Opium War and was literally born in an ox cart as well, too. So that movie resonated to our family in so many different ways. And so for us to be able to honor, uh, to pay tribute to everyone that was involved in the Joy Luck Club. It's icon. It truly is iconic, right? And so for AARP to be able to have this opportunity, especially to showcase the actors, actresses, storylines of people 50 plus, that's what AARP is all about. And what better movie could we do it with? Fanboys, professional artists, and professors. Maybe a nerd who's just like you, talking about the things that you like too. So I invite you to the NOC in full color. You see me? The hard knock.